Because for me, like, you were, like, Christian McCaffrey before Christian McCaffrey. Like, I've never seen a white dude, like, move the way you was moving. Because I remember <laughs> watching you the first time. I was like, oh, he kind of nasty out there. Like, <laughs> But you know, that's a long time ago. It was. You don't. You don't move like that anymore. You got no. too strong. That's what it is. You got too big, huh? Yeah, uh, I like drinking beer too much. And my, <laughs> did, I did my ACL and yeah. Oh, when'd you do that? Well, we can get into that. Fifteen. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's never been the same. Really? Mm. You gotta be. You know, now I'm playing like you in the. I'm just in the pocket. I'm just hanging out in the pocket. Okay. Escaping. <laughs> when I have to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is 99 miles per hour with Percy Garner, and we'd like to thank our sponsor, Your Pizza, the finest pizza anywhere. But if you don't like pizza, which everyone does, they got wings, sandwiches, subs, and of course, salads for those of you who like to be healthy, not like me. Uh, Also, I would like to mention the network that allows me to have this podcast, and that is the Get Level Podcast Network. There's plenty of other podcasts, a lot of content to get through. And uh, also, go check out the website, getlevelpod.com. It'll be up some, somewhere around here. Uh, go there, check out all the websites. You can also listen. Uh, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can listen uh, audible without any interruptions. And then also, to the Rainbow Connection, uh, I am the new executive director there, and we are having our telethon uh, that we have every year. And we're expecting big things, even though in these tough times, uh, we know the community can always come through. That is March 7th, and starting at 11 a.m., And then also my my scholarship fund, also trying to raise uh, money for a Dover student uh, in these hard times to to get some help uh, for them to attend college. What's good, everybody? This is 99 Miles Per Hour with me, your host, Percy Garner. And I have a, I'm not going to say special, I'm just going to say guest today because I still got hard feelings from a long time ago. But uh, I'm messing, I'll get to him in a second. But I just want to make sure everybody's aware of March 7th, Rainbow Connections having their telethon. Um, and uh, we need your support as much as possible. Neighbors in the community, they still need our financial assistance. And uh, the generosity of the community has been magical, and we appreciate it. Uh, let's keep that going. And, um, yeah, make sure you guys check out all the other podcasts on Get Level Pod Network. I feel like I haven't mentioned podcasts in a while, but uh, tune into them. There's plenty. Josh, I don't know how many you got going on right now. Probably 20 now, but um, it's the year of the podcast. So uh, check those out. And, um just make sure you do subscribe. Got to always plug that in there. But anyway, let's get to uh, our guest today. So this dude, uh, I actually met when we went we went down to Houston and played for Team Ohio for baseball and got destroyed. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> that was the first time I met this dude. And uh, and then the, the other time I met him, um, I remember him. He was running with the ball 100 miles. It's like, no. <laughs> 100 yards past me as I couldn't do anything about it. We might touch on that as well. Garner picked off of the goal line by Zach Kolaris. Kolaris takes it back all the way. What a great effort here by Kolaris. 100 yards to the touchdown. Big Red led it at the half, 27-10. And Kolaris taking that back really, if when you look at it, a 14-point swing as Dover was looking to go in for a touchdown, so Big Red turns it around. Uh, but I, I faced off against this dude in high school, one of the most incredible athletes I've ever seen in person, and uh, I guess one of the best winners, too. Uh, I mean, I think he should have won the Heisman, should have been in the NFL, but that's just my opinion. But let's get to it. The dude's from Steubenville. You guys probably recognize who I'm talking about, uh, but his name is Zach Kolaris. Hey, man, happy to have you on the show. Appreciate you coming. Mercy, man. Thank you for the introduction. I, I completely <laughs> forgot about the uh, – I put the the beat downs down in Texas in the back of my brain. I, for, I forgot all about uh, that team Ohio man. We got whooped. Man. We did. We yeah. did. But it was we a learning. About that. It was a learning experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a that was a good time though. Yeah, it was. It was. That was my first time flying on a plane, and that was kind of scary. Ears were all messed up. I couldn't <laughs> even hear anything the first couple games. But that's my. I excuse. remember that was my first time. I think it was my second time on a plane, but like my first time doing anything without my parents. So I was like yeah. terrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I was uh, terrified to meet you and all those all those guys too. I'm like, man, like, I heard he's coming to Ohio State. 
<laughs> That's you know, what I thought. I thought I was going to Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? But no, that was just to meet you guys and have all that talent. Um, you know, and just because you know Dover's good, but you know to be surrounded with all you know the people from best from the the whole state of Ohio was it was pretty cool. And just uh, and I'm glad we were able to meet each other before that, so I could have a little you know familiarity with you. And I was impressed already at shortstop. I was like, man. And then I saw you play basketball, and then of course football. So, um, but before we get into that, I just want to you know talk about. Uh, you know, you're preparing for, I don't know, your 10th season. Yeah, this will be 10. Whew. I mean, football, we all know, uh, in the NFL sense for not for long and, and not many people have a long successful career. And, uh, I mean, if I'm saying this correct, are you, are you the highest paid player in Canada? Uh, the, the quarterbacks are usually the highest paid guy on the team. And gotcha. It's, it's just kind of how the structure of the salary cap works out. So, I'm one of them, but it just it just it just kind of is what it is with how you know how you have to to, to delegate the money out yeah. to a roster. So it sounds like you're uncomfortable um, talking about money. So we'll get off. <laughs> we'll skip. We'll skip that one. But no, yeah. prepare for your tenth season. <laughs> <laughs> prepare for your your tenth season. I mean, how's that been with you know with how things are going? How's the Canadian Football League been? Uh, you know, I guess affected by all the things that are happening. Yeah, so we, we missed our season last season, which was unfortunate. It was disappointing. Um, you know, from, from what I know about the business model, a lot of it depends on having, you know, people in the stands. So, you know, that was just something that we couldn't do last season. And, you know, it, it was tough because, you know, a lot of guys went without paychecks and it was hard for everybody. Um, so we're hoping, you know, with the, the vaccination rollout and, uh, and all those things that, we're able to, to have some type of capacity in the stadiums um, so that we can play. And, uh, you know, I'd be lying to you to know, to, to, to say that I know all the ins and outs of what it's going to take for us to play, but, you know, we're hoping, hoping for it and are cautiously optimistic uh, yeah. about it. But, um, you know, just taking it at, you know, how I would any other off season, um, except for, you know, we're both getting, getting up there in age as athletes and, you know, it's not necessarily about, you know, squatting the most weight or, you know, you know, being the strongest guy anymore. It's a lot of it is just kind of, you know, taking care of your body and try, trying to eat right and, you know, all those different things. So um, it's always a little bit different every year uh, in terms of just kind of, you know, preparing your body for a season. Um, and then obviously, you know, I'm sure you would see the same thing with baseball. It's, it's a lot of, you know, film study and studying the batters and, and those kind of things. Right. So just trying to stay on top of that. Uh, it's been a little different again, cause we missed an entire season, but I really love the game. I, I really like, you know, watching tape, watching, watching old games. So um, just kind of been doing that. Good. Uh, I mean, you mentioned, you know, it's getting old in age, like, and, and trying to eat right, man. I, that's on a, I'm on a struggle right there right now. I'm on this low carb diet, but I'm addicted to um, Easter, Reese cups, so it's really hard. Oh, you were Reese. I for, forgot you were a Reese cup guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. It's bad. But you know, I'm a. You probably don't even know. I'm two sixty five right now. So, oh man, you look slim in that one. <laughs> I know. That's you know. I strategically put my clothes and choose my clothes from the the right places to make me keep you know my figure going. Uh, but a lot of people are surprised. But yeah, I'm getting big, and the wife is like, "All right, you need to figure this out now." Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be you'll be fine. I, I watched a couple of your clips on here though, and I, I saw you have the pizza shout outs before <laughs> before everything starts. So maybe maybe just have a piece, you know. And yes, I, I got to send you some Zoomville pizza. I don't know if you've ever had like the Ohio Valley stuff. So no, I got to get some, some of my friends to send you some frozen stuff before you really kick into high gear with that paleo diet. Yeah, let's, let's get you. Get you fed some some Ohio Valley pizza first. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> I mean, address. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I'm down with it. Uh, and I know you talked about when we were before I asked you to come on the show. We were talking about you know maybe getting together and going to a game. I, I you know hope whenever you're in town, just you know hit me up and we could do that. Um, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. it'd be awesome. Uh, but now, uh, you know, obviously we talked a little about about COVID, and how it's affected a little bit of the. Um, your preparation and the and how it canceled your whole last season, but let's talk about has it how has it affected I guess your family and and stuff like that. You know, you got a, a little one, uh, Sierra now, and you know how old is she? Ten months. Ten months. Yeah. Ten, right, April, ten. She was April eleventh, so we're around ten months right now. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. My my daughter was April second, but 
She's almost two. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Just this year, too? Nah, she's almost two. She'll be two uh, this April. Okay, and you have two, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Got the seven-year-old, Percy the fourth. I didn't know if you were aware. There's so many. There's so many persons on like Twitter and everything. So yeah, I I remember when he was born. Okay, that's that's what's up. Uh, It's 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 magical. Now that feels so good that Zach Kolaris follows me on Twitter. That's crazy. (laughs) The funniest part about about any of this stuff is you know we're from smaller towns, right? Yeah. So when I met you, it was the same thing. Like everybody was like, "Oh man, you you met Percy Garner, Dan (laughs) If." Like, because like that's all we can talk about. Yeah. It's like okay, like. You know, we play these like these are the guys. Like, these are God guys. Yeah, know? yeah. So it's it's just so funny. It's so funny when you meet different people, like, like Mike Shaw from Kettering Alter. We yeah. played him in the state that one year, and like I met him after college was over, and it was just it's just so funny. It's like because we're on the opposite ends of the state. Yeah. And like you know, you're talking amongst your your friends and people you grew up with, and it's like, man, yeah, Mike Shaw, and it's just you meet him, it's just like a normal guy. It's just a guy. <laughs> It's, it's just it's just so it's funny man. it is it is and i well let me tell you this story real quick so before we were about to play you guys i think you guys played john glenn or something and uh yeah. i was watching that game like highlights the night after our game and i was just like <laughs> man i, I think hope- you told me this story i think <laughs> yeah. you told me this story keep going, keep going i was like man i hope my teammates are not watching this film <laughs> Because I think you, your linebacker Bronco like jumped the snap and like jumped over the whole line of scrimmage and tackled the quarterback before the play even started. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I then, think I'm pretty sure that game too. Like my best friend in the world like knocked himself like unconscious, <laughs> like on a crack on a crack back block. Oh, and, when like, Bogart just, had the around the end. Yeah, crushed the dude too. Oh my like, gosh! But he he got up like this. And it's Mike DeCartonia. It's, it, he's still I was about to say, I didn't know how to say his last name, so I was hoping you would and, say it. <laughs> and I remember I remember you said to me at the Big 33, you're like, man, me and Dan were just like trying to make sure nobody saw that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they can't see this, man, because everybody was hyped to play Maslin, and we we walked into Maslin Stadium, and everybody was like, whoa. They had a little live tiger growling at us. <laughs> everybody was like, yeah. uh, I don't know if we we ready for this. <laughs> But, it's um, funny, man. Everybody feels that way. And then the first snap happens, and it's just, it's just playing ball. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, COVID has affected us all, and and you've had your your daughter Sierra, and um, you know, you're you're becoming an adult. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell tell us a little bit about your wife. Uh, how'd you how'd you meet her, and uh, how long you guys been yeah, together? So- yeah, so uh, she's, she's actually from Toronto, so we're living up here in, in Canada right now. Um, I met her through a teammate of mine when I was playing in Hamilton. His wife's cousin and my wife were best friends from high school. Um, and yeah, they, you know, I was single at the time, and you know, they, we'd always hang out. I'd, I'd kind of be the third wheel a lot of the time. They're like, you know, you should, meet, you should meet my friend. She lives up the road in Toronto. And I said, okay. And uh, like my, ba- my background is Greek and, and Polish, but my... And, and she goes, yeah, she's, she's Greek Macedonian. And I said, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. I'll meet her. And then three years later we got married and now we just had our first daughter. So uh, she's, a, she's a teacher. She's, she's wonderful. So like, you know, thank, thank God for football led me to, yeah. to my wife. So yeah. Pretty yeah. Cool. Football. I was going to ask you, you know, obviously being from Steubenville football is huge. Same thing for Dover, but you know, when we were, 16 17 18 we didn't really know where football would take us and you know when i think about your career i just think about you know tony pike going down and you stepping in in the first play you take it to the house 72 yards or something like that and i'm just like oh i I knew he was gonna be a beast and it's just and then you know you're at cincinnati which i'm kind of mad at cincinnati because i went on a visit there and they told me i couldn't play both baseball and football but then i feel like they gave you that opportunity so i was kind of mad at dentro see dentro didn't recruit me Ah, oh, okay, yeah. okay. I'll get him. I'll give him a yeah. pass then. I'll give him a pass. And he, and he made me get like a three point two GPA, so I had to miss a year, and then I played baseball for the next year. Oh, uh, okay. He's like, you have to prove to me, you know, Kelly. You got to prove to me that you can do school too. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. Yeah. What What was that like playing behind? I guess uh, uh, a guy like Tony Pike, who was in the Heisman talks. Uh, was that? Yeah. You know, how was that? It was great, man. It was uh, you know, kind of going back to where what you first started off talking about when you were 16, 17 in high school, like, you know, I never thought like, honestly, when you're, when you're living it, you, you don't really think 
about the next step. You know, I feel like kids today, everything is so geared toward getting their tape out there and going to camps and like, you know, making sure your commitments on Twitter. And mm-hmm. like, I, I just wanted to, like, we just wanted to play, you know, and I really never thought past, you know, like we have to win this next game. And if, if we keep winning, then then maybe I'll get a letter from, yeah. from somebody. Right. It was, yep. and it's, again, being from small towns, it, it was like, man, is anybody ever going to come down here and see us? Um, so I think that was the last offer for Cincinnati. Like I was committed to Kent state and uh, to play baseball and, and football on the side. And um, I just remember thinking, you know, talking with my dad about it. And, you know, I really love football. I just, I love, love that. I love baseball too, but I really like to play football. And, you know, it was an opportunity at the time to play at a BCS level school, um, you know, and they didn't guarantee me that I could play quarterback. You know, they said, you know, we can turn you into a safety if we have to, but, you know, we, we have a scholarship left and, um, you know, would you want to come, come down here? And the guy jumped on the opportunity like, the next day. We, we drove down at night for a visit and, you know, I committed, committed right there. I didn't see anything. I was like, I don't have to drive down. Like I'm in, you know, like, I'm in, just give me a chance to compete. Right? Yes. Yeah. But, um, but it's funny. I, I met Tony like the second day I was down there and Tony's one of the funniest guys you ever like, be around, like just a total goofball. And he was, yeah. uh, like a gray shirt, red shirt kind of walk on at first. And mm. I think Kelly told him going into his like junior year, like we're going to like not renew your scholarship kind of thing right like he was like fourth or fifth on the depth chart wow and uh and i think he had a really good training camp he's an unbelievable thrower like seven on seven thrower just like one of the best you'll ever see wow. um and then he had a great training camp and our start at the time dustin grutza got got hurt in a game and he came in and played and was just it was lights out and you know kind of kind of the same way i got my shot was you know unfortunately injuries happen but she always yeah. has to be prepared um and then you know and then from there the coaches decide you know Who's going who's gonna to be the guy? But, but uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot from Tony. More, more kind of off the field. Just you know, never to take yourself too serious. He was really a funny, really a funny guy. And but just uh, yeah, from a football standpoint, just you've probably been around guys like this too. You know, probably at camps like just in t-shirt and shorts, just ungodly at throwing yeah. seven on seven. Just amazing. Yeah. So, but Tony's a great guy. That's what's up. And it's sort of like a, a Tom Brady thing. You know, you, you just get put in the situation and then it's up to you if you're going to respond or not. So I right. mean, that's been the story of my entire career, really. Like, I know what we, we prepared a little bit for this. She sent me some questions and mm-hmm. like, you know, it's just a lot of it's luck. You, you get a break and you get an opportunity, you know, cause I've never been a guy who's come in, you know, who's come in like, Oh, that's, that's the guy. Like he's got all the tangible stuff, you know, he's his arms off the chart. He's accurate. Like it's never been that for me. Like, so it was, it was funny. And I was telling a story to my trainer the other day, like my first, my first year in the CFL where I was actually like coming into camp as a starter. And like Steve McGee was there. If you remember that name, Steve McGee, yeah. from yeah. he played it, played at, uh, for the Cowboys for a while. And, uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli, who was just like amazing to watch on TV when we were, were that age. Um, and a couple other guys that like, again, like, it's kind of like the, man, you're getting to meet Percy Garner. It was like, I was like kind of starstruck, Yeah. but I was, I was the starter coming in. <laughs> and I was just thinking, about, and I was like, I remember my first pass was just like, I missed a guy by five yards. I just missed it by five yards. And I remember thinking to myself, like, they're probably looking at me like, who is this punk? Like, no way this guy <laughs> can play. And then I got hit. And then like, then he started playing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how I stumbled down that road, but like for me, it's just always been like, I was fortunate enough that I, I think I showed the coaches what I can do and they had trust in me when the guy got hurt and then you just got to take it from there. So you got to get some, some breaks along the way and, and just be prepared. That's what I always try to tell, you know, younger, younger people. It's like, you're, you're going to get an opportunity somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like you you got to be ready when it, when it comes. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. for just, I, you know, cause I always talk about, um, you know, knowing you a little bit and I, I tell your story to some people, um, and I was curious, were, were you up for any Heisman? Because I want to, I feel like you were not, I know you weren't like a finalist that went to the TV show, but yeah. I feel like your name was getting tossed around for that because you're, you had a, you know, a really good se- uh, career at, at Cincinnati after Tony play went down. Yeah. I, I think like, you know, how the, the, you know, a university will always kind of like pump their guy up before a season starts. It was probably that kind of deal, but I never had like an off the chart season where, uh, I was ever really in consideration. It was probably my sophomore season when I went in for Tony for seven games was probably the best numbers wise that I, that I you know, 
had in my career. That was with Brian Kelly his last year. So, oh, gotcha. Uh, but yeah, you, you know how it is. You know, <laughs> whoever, whoever their quarterback is, like, yeah, it's Zach Barnes for Heisman. So yeah, we. I think there's probably some bars in Studentville that had those posters, but it was never. <laughs> it was never a real. It was never a real thing. <laughs> Got you. And then you're saying yeah. Kelly, he went. That's when he went to Notre Dame. Yeah. So okay. we we went undefeated that season, and we we actually played Florida in the Sugar Bowl. He just got worked. But <laughs> but yeah, Kelly. Kelly left uh, before that game for Notre Dame. So. Gotcha. Okay. I don't. Now, I don't blame him, man. It was his it, job. Yeah, and Coach Hoke did that to us too, but it made sense, you know. But yeah. it was just like, man, because we were riding high at Ball State. You know, we're twelfth in the nation. Oh my gosh, little old Ball State. And then he was. I didn't like, know you were guys for twelfth in the nation. Yeah, well, we were twelve and zero, and then we lost uh, the MAC championship to Buffalo, and then we lost uh, the bowl game to Tulsa. So. We were twelve and zero going into the oh. MAC championship, yeah. And Nate Davis, and then we're you know big old Nate Davis. You know that name. And, and I, you know, I, I I like hadn't had a conversation with Nate till or like since like sixth or seventh grade. So, really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, but, but we we were always going against each other, yeah. right? But yeah, we never yeah. did in high school. Yeah, yeah Nate was a dog. Man. Yeah, he was Nate something was spe- something special, man. He always he was the locker was next to mine and. I would just look at him like, man, he just doesn't know how good he is. He's just like, you know, he's just live, loving life. And he act, the funny thing is he got drafted out of high school for baseball. Uh, he was, I feel he, like he didn't even play in high school. He just got drafted. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's how good of an athlete that guy was. Yeah, we all know what he did in football. He ended up making it to the NFL. But even in basketball, he was like, you know, top oh. scorer in Ohio. And he was trying to play at Ball State, but the football team wouldn't let him. So. Dude, we, we – um. We played him like all, you know, my entire life growing up. It was always like us versus Bel Air in the, you know, the little AAU championships. It was, or the travel teams, whatever you want to call them. It wasn't AAU, it was the travel teams. And uh, we would have, we, we had a guy, God rest his soul, he passed away, that could just run for, for days and days and days. And we would have to just have him face guard Nate. You know, the, like you couldn't let Nate dribble the ball across half court because he'd shoot, like in sixth grade, <laughs> and make the shot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It's like I remember being like in fifth grade. Like he was like Steph Curry, like yeah. in, uh, in middle school. Just he just walk across and like a grown man. Like <laughs> it was crazy. And we would just have Daryl Longmire. We just had we would just have like, Daryl. Just don't let him touch the ball. He would just be like this all game, just in his face all game. I, I don't know how Nate never punched him. <laughs> Oh man! And the fu- the funny thing about that is, so I heard about Nate all this time, and I get to Ball State, and he's like, "Yeah, I've been hearing all this talk that you know you're better than me, but you know I'm I'm gonna show you who Nate Davis is." And I was just like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I didn't know if people would say that. That's cool." But <laughs> and then we all we That's all know the introduction. Yeah, we all know the history. But he was cool after that. Nice but to meet he, you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had to set the stage. But after that, he was pretty cool. Um. Now, obviously, you had a great career. We just talked about that. But, like, other than, you know, going to Canada and, and stuff like that, like, what where, like what has football done for you overall? Obviously, you've learned a lot on the field, discipline. You've always been a hard worker and stuff like that. But what has it taught you, uh, you know, skills or anything in life, like, off the field? Um, to, like, as a father, yeah. as a husband, all that stuff. You know, I, th- I think like from for, from a day to day standpoint, like time management and, and those kind of things, you definitely pick up on. But you know, the the cliche terms that you always hear, you know, accountability, dependability, you know, um, things that we've been hearing since we were in middle school. I'm sure your program was built the same way with Coach Jeff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're when you're coming up like that, when you're growing up in it, you kind of take it for granted and you roll your eyes and it's like, man, we're just hearing this again and again. Um, but you know, as you get older, you realize like those are the people who who has some success in life. It's like, you, it's just, it's being there. It's, it's being dependable to your, your coworkers. It's being dependable to your teammates. Uh, it's being accountable. It's being dependable you know, to your wife. And, you know, obviously now you're being a father, you, you feel all those things too. Um, you know, obviously, you know, hard work and, and teamwork, all those things um, become innate, you know, when, when you've been around a team sport for so long, um, you know, but I, I always, you know, if anybody ever asks me this question, you know, what has football done for me? It's, I mean, it's done everything for me. You know, it, it's it, it, it's provided, you know, my livelihood, you know, the last nine years. Um, I, you know, I can't I can't name, you know, it, it would take me a long time to name how many relationships I've formed, you know, from the game, from meeting just people, you know, whether it's coaches or players or, you know, 
parents of, of some of my teammates that I stay in touch with. And, and you learn so many things, you know, from those relationships. Um, and then obviously, like I touched on earlier, you know, it's, it led me here to this country. And I, you know, I didn't, you know, my dad had to convince me to, to even take the training camp offer. I wanted to just, you know, go be a graduate assistant at Cincinnati and, and kind of move on with my life. Um, but I did. And, you know, five years later, you know, I meet the love of my life and now we have a beautiful daughter and we're now we're building something here. So it's really, I mean, you know, I'm sure you would say the same thing. And I know, I know your wife's from your hometown. Yeah. I, I believe, yeah. High right? school sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. High school sweetheart. But yeah, I'm, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you playing sports played a, a part in that. And um, yeah, it's done everything for me really. Yeah. And then, and then it's just up to the, you know, I think it's up to me to like to, to build off of that. You know, it's not going to last forever, obviously playing isn't, but, um, you know, that's what you do with those relationships. You know, so. Yeah. I was going to say, so what, what do you, what do you see yourself doing after you're done? I mean, you're obviously you're on your 10th season and I know your body doesn't feel like mine because you probably wouldn't be playing if it felt like mine, but <laughs> no, it's, I don't know how Brady does it, man. I don't know how these guys do it. There's, there's not a chance, not a chance you can play Tom 40. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So we, so, uh, so right now, um, actually here in the province, we, have invested in two, uh, two franchises, uh, learning centers. Like they, you know, have you ever heard of Oxford learning? Um, that's kind of the most popular one up here. Well, ours is the competitor to that. It's called scholars education center. My wife being a teacher is passionate about teaching. I'm, you know, I'm passionate about, you know, helping children. And I, I really do believe that, you know, when a, when a kid doesn't have to worry about, you know, school in terms of like, you know, sitting there in the classroom and not knowing what they're doing, I really think, their their brain can open up to a lot of things, right? So, I mean, obviously we charge a price too, but it's it's been a cool business to get into. We're about seven or eight months in. It's been tough during the pandemic. Um, so just trying to learn how to run a business on the fly, you know, that's what I've been doing. And, you know, I don't know if I can see myself doing it long term. Um, you know, being away from the game has been has been tough. Um, you know, not just playing, but just, you know, being around uh, you know, work you know being in there and studying studying the game and and those kind of things so uh, yeah i had coaches like when i was in middle school telling me like you're, you're gonna be a coach like you just you <laughs> love you just love it you like you you're teaching like your teammates now like you just love it so it's something that i've always wanted to do as coach and that's probably where my life will uh, lead us to but you know you know as being married you have to also consider um you know, what your partner wants. And my wife has a wonderful job here. She's a kindergarten teacher and she's been doing that for, for 10 years. So we got to figure it out, but, but, you know, we're fortunate, fortunate to be in the position that we are. So we're happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. I mean, I can, I could see that. I always want to do like individualized coaching because to me, you know, coaching a team is just in, intimidating. You know, when I look at, you know, you had, you had Reno, and I had coach if and like those dudes, like, obviously, if, if I want to be a coach, I want to be like those guys, you know, they're top notch. But it's just like, man, they, you know, it's, it's a lot of time, uh, dedication. And but at the end of the day, once you see the finished product, when your team goes out there and handles business and then you see them beyond and in and, and the life and the impact that you've had, you know, I always try to tell Coach Jeff, like, man, you've, you've been a great, like, a father figure in my life. Like, and he's like, oh, you know, I just did what I was supposed to do, you know. He always he always tries to get away from the credit, like, no. Of course, of course. <laughs> so they, they all are. Yeah. They're all that way. Yeah, the no, ones are all that way, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. I don't know if I'll be able to it's, get him on here. He he says he doesn't like to talk, but when Coach Jeff starts talking, he's a good speaker. But he always you need, to get, you need to get him and Reno on like oh my <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> that'd be great just sit back just sit back and let him tell stories yes oh that would that's a good idea so I'm gonna start I'm gonna start uh, lobbying to get that done so uh, I'll, text, I'll text Reno after this but like, hey Percy Gardner wants you on like, Percy really <laughs> <laughs> just let him smoke a cigar and put uh, put one of those hats on like the uh, <laughs> like a, a hat for the beach on and he'll he'll do whatever, whatever all right you, he can do that he can do that here right Josh. Yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> isn't isn't it isn't it uh isn't it like kind of going back to what you're saying though about you know idolizing your coaches you know specifically those guys growing up it, it like as we're adults now yeah it you do even appreciate even more like kind of the grind of what they had to do you know because when you're a kid you're just like oh he's my coach yeah he shows up <laughs> he shows up in coaches yeah you know but it's like it's work man it's every single yes. day. 
know? A lot of time. So like, and, yeah. Oh, man. And the same thing goes for, for parents too, right? It's like, man, like you have no idea <laughs> until, you, until you're actually like in that position. Like I call my parents every day like, man, I can't believe you guys have done this for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's just like all the things you take for granted. It's yeah. Just crazy. Yeah, you know, I haven't experienced taking my son to any sporting. I mean, he did flag football, but, uh, you know, nothing where time is being taken, you know. And my my brother and sister are going through that where their son's really into baseball and he's good and he's on all these travel teams. And my wife's like, Purse is not playing baseball at all. We are not traveling around like this. This is nuts. Oh, gosh. I go, if he wants to, he can. But, um, but no, like, you know, you. Uh, I'm assuming you guys plan to have more children. Yeah, yep, God willing, yep. Uh, yep, yep. So, I mean, is that something you would love to, you know, you feel like you'd be a good coach for your son, or was that something you would be, you know, you would try to avoid, you know, because cause I know a lot of families and, and you know, sons and dads, uh, even in Dover, I'm aware of some relationships that aren't that great because of, you know, dad never takes the coach hat off, and, you know, that could be tough. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've – you know, I've thought about that for years, even before I was married, you know, you just always think about, you know, what, what you would be like as a dad. I, my dad was always really hands off with me and he was just really laid back. And like, you know, as long as I had a good attitude and, you know, I, I was giving it my all there was, I could have the worst game of my life and he would never really even talk to me about it. It was just like, you know, like, Hey, you, you know, you gave it your best kind of thing. So I'd like to, I'd like to kind of emulate that, you know, cause, uh, you know, that's kind of what made me the person that I am. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you've been doing it for so long, you kind of like, Hey, I, I can show you how to do it this way too. And then, <laughs> and then you, you think, you think about like, okay, who knows who the coach is going to be, you know, like, what are they, what are they saying to him? I, I don't yeah. even mean from a strategy standpoint. I mean, like, what, like, are they saying like positive things? Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, no, definitely. So it's like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be like the fourth coach. Like just, I, I'd like to just keep the book. <laughs> you know, at baseball, gotcha. they just you know, just mark that. Yeah, so, yeah. Gotcha. Kind of sit there and listen, listen. You know, and if I have to speak up, I'll speak up. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, no, that's wrong. No, no, <laughs> no. And I, I, yeah, I no, you don't talk to my kid that way. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Well, I struggle with that just stuff around the house because I'm like, this is the right way, son. Do it this way, you know. But I, I try to be a little open-minded and stuff's different. And uh, we'll grow as parents and, you know, I'm a, I'll get your feedback because, you know, I've been a parent for a while. But uh, then again, you know, my wife was the main one, uh, you know, while I was playing baseball. I'd be gone for seven months. So, you know, the wives, they, they take a lot of sacrifice. But, you know, it seems to, in your situation, you know, you're already ahead of the game thinking about, you know, the best, what's the best opportunity, your best situation for both of you. So I think you're good. I think you, you're set up good for success in the future. You know, happy wife, happy life. We just bought a, bought a new house, just like you said you moved oh, into a year and a half. Yeah, yep. yep. So the wife's happy. So that's all that matters. But <laughs> there's, there's good real estate down in Steubenville. Once, once young Percy, <laughs> once he grows into, you know, his body and he's, Throwing the football around and, and he's know, looking like Tamawi McGee out there. Sons, if I don't have any sons, we'll we'll, we'll take you in student milk. Uh, okay, <laughs> you sound like Philly now. Philly was shut. You know, hey, you want to be our athletic director? Hey, you want to be the coach? <laughs> I'm like, I can't do that. Steubenville's different, though. But you're different. Recruiting you early. Yes. Right. <laughs> I, got you, I got you a house already. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we talked about, you know, coaching and being a parent. But, I mean, you've been a leader your whole life. I mean, you're kind of forced into it. Um, and it sounds like you've grasped just, you just, it just came naturally. You know, you said your coaches, you know, said you love it and you want to be a coach, uh, just from how you were on the field. Um, you know, before we wrap this up, I just want to ask like, you know, being a quarterback and I never intentionally was a leader, like, all right, guys, listen up. You know, I would, <laughs> I would never do that or in the huddle, you know, I would never be very vocal and, and I just, you know, even intentionally consciously, I wasn't thinking, okay, I'm a lead by example. I just, it just yeah. was a part of it. I'm assuming you're similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Like, you know, I think there was a couple times in my career, like when I was younger, you know, I, I tried to be that raw, raw person. It's just, it's really not my personality. But, you know, again, you can relate to this, you know, being the quarterback, it kind of happens by proxy. You know, the guys look to you because you're the voice in the huddle, right? So, uh, you know, my baseball coach would always tell us, you know, you, you don't want to get too high. You don't want to get too low. Just, just stay even. So that's, it's kind of always been my, you know, mentality with, with leadership as well as, like you said, you know, being, 
in the, not a role model to your peers, but like if, if you're going to expect these guys to, to sell out and be prepared, like you, you damn well better be prepared. Yeah. Even more so. Like yeah. if, if somebody has a question for you, you better be ready to answer it. So I've always tried to, um, to lead that way. And, and, you know, there's, there's some guys that, you know, I'm not, I'm not calling anybody out individually, but like, you know, they kind of talk about being there at four 30 in the morning and, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, it's just like, for me, it's just like, I'm getting my work done. I'm here. I don't need to show you. Yeah. Like, you know, so I don't need to promote that, but you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough, it's tough to answer that question, you know, from a leadership standpoint, but I, I really think obviously leading by example is probably the biggest thing. Um, and then as the quarterback, you know, as you get older too, like, you know, in the locker room, like I'm still listening to like Drake from like 2009. <laughs> Like, so I got to figure out a way to relate to these young people, you know? So, and, and I think I, like, I really learned that in college, but I've always kind of been the, the guy anyways, that, not the guy, but like, I can relate with anybody. Like I can yeah. talk to anybody. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter, um, you know, how many brothers and sisters you have. Like I just, I, I, I can be friendly with anybody. So I think like, you know, that the empathy portion of it and, you know, just being relatable to your teammates and, you know, trying to get to know them. I, I think that's, that's huge for team building. And again, I come from a sport that's, you know, it, it's a, it's a team sport. There's not an individual that can really elevate a team, you know, maybe minus Tom Brady, the guys played in 10 <laughs> Super Bowls, like it's insane. But, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I, I think just, you know, taking the time to get to know your teammates and, and caring, you know, I, I really think that when they got, when the guys know that you care and then that you're all in, they follow. Gotcha. And, it, and it helps when you have, a mature group of guys around you too, when there's seven, eight, nine of you guys in the locker room and it's not just, you know, one guy or just a coach. And that's when things tend to go south. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One, one last question. So this might be yeah. thinking too far in the, in the future, but you know, I don't know. I, I know I've been thinking about this lately. So um, I know you just had Sierra. It's not too, <laughs> might be too fast, but when you, when you think about, you know, legacy and, you know, stuff you're, you're, when you think about leaving here, uh, and when I say here, not this podcast, I mean the earth, but <laughs> what, what do you think about, like, what do you want to be remembered for or, and, and what do you want to, you know, leave, uh, as Zach Kolaris, you know, he was uh, oh. blank. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I've never been asked that. Um, oh, I, I, you know, I would hope that, you know, my family knows that I did everything in my power to, you know, to, to be there for them, and you know, no matter what, you know, not just, you know, my wife and children, but, you know, my, my extended family as well. Um, you know, from a public figure standpoint, as you know, you kind of, kind of, you kind of are in your hometown being who we are. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I try to, like you were talking about earlier, uh, you know, a charity that I'm, I'm guessing you're running, yep. um, and you try to be as involved as you possibly can. And, and not, don't just, do it for recognition, like really, you know, get your hands dirty and, and, and be there, um, you know, with, with people, with, with children, you know, like we have a foundation, a group of friends and I back home, it's called the Zach Lars foundation, but really it's, it's four of us that put it together. And, and my buddy who knocked that guy out from John Glenn is, is really the guy who, who kind of runs it, but you know, it's just, you know, trying to, trying to help kids and, you know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm rambling and, and, and no, you're all good. that, but, yeah, really just, I don't know, being a good person and, um, you know, and then I, I left it all out there for my family and my, and my friends, you know, so. Yeah. And, I, and I can vouch for that, you know, I know we talked about this earlier, but, you know, when I, and I, I was a, I was a person who, and I, I admit this, you know, I didn't really have like the most confidence all the time, especially baseball, football, I can get in the room, I can tell you the coverages and I just was confident, you know, coming to a line of scrimmage, but baseball, there's so many different things that can happen on a play. I was just out there like, all right, I'm going to throw this ball as hard as I can and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I always like, like when we played against, you know, the Maslins of the world and, and guys like in Steubenville and you're seeing, you know, guys looking like Tamawi McGee out there and you're like, is he in high school? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but then you see guys like Stevie Davis and you're like, is he in middle school? No, I'm just <laughs> he's, he's, he's about to be my brother-in-law. Really? Marry my sister. Yeah. Oh man, I've actually met him at um, Coastal Carolina. I was playing against him in baseball, and I was like, "Wait, what the? 
I was like, oh man, that's crazy. But um, small world. yeah, it is small world. But um, before I start rambling on, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But like, I can just, I can just vouch for and say, like, you're just a, you're just a guy, man. You're just a dude. Like, you're not like, you know, I'm Zach Kolaris. You know, I'm saying I'm, I went 15 and 0 as a quarterback. You know, I never lost. So, <laughs> but you're like my buddies. My buddies throw, me, throw that at me all the time. It's like, come on, man, just walk, just walk in. Just tell me you were 30 and 0. Tell me 30 and 0. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> no, I appreciate, I appreciate that. And again, going back to what we what we said earlier, it's just it's funny once you get to know, you know, people that you see on, you know, the local news, and it's like, man, like you see how far Percy Gardner can throw that football, and it's like, you know, you see how hard he throws, and then like, all right, the first time I met you, I feel like we we like belly laugh for like ten minutes, yeah. and we're like the, stu- the stupidest thing in the world. And like, yeah. My buddies are like, so what was Percy like? It's like he's one of the funniest guys I've ever met. Like we even talk about sports. Yeah. You know? like, we just, yeah. Well, and so, right yeah. Be- before you leave, I got one little thing. So where that kind of hurt me. So in my college career, playing once I went over to baseball, yeah. I was playing on the summer team, and we had a guy from Toledo who's inside the MAC conference, and they had faced me the year before, and they said they were terrified, you know, because I was what six three, two thirty, just came from football, and I was on the mound, and I was just like ah, and I didn't know what was yeah. happening. I, they were afraid I was going to hit them for one. Yeah, and then they they played on the summer ball team with me, and they were like, "Dude, we just we were not afraid of you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> you know, but bro, like with you, like you have a when you're not smiling, which I know you're smiling often. But yeah. I remember like baseball. This I think before I really met you on the team Ohio team, we probably faced you for Legion. Oh yeah, and yeah. like you just had that serious face. I'm like, this dude looks mean, like mean. <laughs> He might just throw it at my head, and he's throwing it like ninety something, and I can't get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I just oh, wish funny. I just wish uh, uh, that Micah, Daniel, and all of them could be here. Man, this is this was fun just getting back, you know, to to reminisce. And uh, I do appreciate you coming, uh, you know, by the show. Well, I guess you didn't come, but you know what I mean. Um, I appreciate yeah, you yeah, being yeah. here, and uh, this was a fun episode for me. Um, is there anything it, else? We should, we should get, we should get some of the guys together. I get a couple of my buddies too, like on a, on a Google. Thing yeah. Josh, like, you can split it where like, you know, however many faces we can have up there. All right. He's saying yes. All right. That'd be great. That'd, that'd, be, be, that'd be fun. That'd yes. Be fun. Well, um, I appreciate it. We're going to wrap this up and, uh, so you can get back to your, your, your wife and, and baby. And, uh, so I can get back to my kids too, but <laughs> Appreciate you coming by. Everybody, make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and uh, this will video will be up uh, Tuesday, and uh, we'll be back next Tuesday. So, thanks, love everybody. Appreciate you. Peace.